Well, good morning. How are you today? I hope you're doing well. It's been uh, quite a week. It's been a week filled with challenge and a certain amount of frustration. Uh, I've thought about uh, the time that we're going to be spending here together this morning all week long. I have stopped and prayed many times about this segment of my week and this segment of your week and the intersection of, of your week and my week. I hope this is a time of, of blessing and encouragement to you. Uh, last Sunday, I preached on the topic of peace, and this last week I met with the Executive Presbytery, and I talked to them about how we need to be bearing fruit in this season. And both of those topics are topics that um, prepare you, and they move you ahead, that uh, we're leaning into what's happening instead of recoiling from it that there's an expectation that something good is going to happen and there's something more and uh, that we're not only encountering challenge, we're not only encountering frustration and difficulty, but we are also thriving in the midst of it. This morning, I want to add another level of thought to that set of thoughts that I shared last Sunday and that I shared with the Executive Presbytery. I want to talk to you about not just existing, but leading in crisis. When something happens that you would deem, your church would deem, or we as the body of Christ might deem as crisis, that society might deem as crisis, that you would be in a position that you're leading in the midst of that, of, of that type of an environment. Please remember that when we talk about leadership, we're speaking about moving people. Moving them from where they are to a preferred location can take place, in fact, must take place, even in the midst of a crisis type of a situation. This morning, I want to pray for you before I jump into the comments I've prepared for you. Father, I thank you for each pastor who's listening, each missionary, each senior pastor, music pastor, youth pastor, children's pastor, all of the ministry positions represented in the hearers of this brief video. Strengthen them for your kingdom's work. Bless them, God, with rest and peace in their minds and in their spirits. And God, I pray that as we spend just a few minutes together today, that Holy Spirit of God, that you would speak to each of us about what it is that you want to do through us in this season. Help us, God, to be your men and your women your young people who are actively moving people from where they are to where they need to be during July of 2020. Bless and keep my friends, Lord, over this day and over this weekend, and especially over these next several minutes as we spend them together. I pray in your name, Lord. Amen. Crisis. In a crisis, it is enormously easy to take <laughs> everything that happens quite personally. And when you take things personally, you have a tendency to overreact. When you feel frustrated, when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel overpowered, it's quite easy to start shutting down. Don't. People are still following you, Pastor. Even when you're in the middle of a personal crisis, or a national crisis, or a statewide crisis, or a church crisis, or a board crisis. People are still following you. Don't give in to that feeling of hopelessness where you're going to withdraw and where you're going to shut down. Don't overreact. Don't go to the opposite and just start shutting down. Do what it is that you need to do. Lead people because they're following you. Circumstances can throw the leader just like everyone else. The difference is that the leader can't stay thrown. One of the things that you will uh, be remembered for in your life is how you handle crisis moments. Please remember, anybody can hold the helm when the sea is calm. And the reason that we have leaders is to deal with problems. And the reason that we have pastors is to deal with circumstances and situations to calm the sheep and to take the sheep to safe pasture. Let me draw a couple of thoughts to, uh, today about crisis and leadership in crisis from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Let me read to you verses 1 through 3 from 2 Chronicles chapter 20. This is from the NIV 1984 translation. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites with some of the Moonites, K 
came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some of the men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazaz, Haz, Hazazon Tamar, that is En Gedi. I like En Gedi better than that other translation. <laughs> Alarmed, Jehoshaphat, verse 3, resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The first thing I want to say from these passages is, number one, when you're leading in crisis, check your attitude so that it, too, does not end up as an out-of-control part of the scenario. There is much in a crisis that's out of control. Leader, you cannot be out of control. You need to be very much under the control of the Holy Spirit. What Part of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. We need to be not only controlled by God, but we need to have control of ourself. Check your attitude so that you don't end up as one more entity that is out of control in the middle of a crisis. The first and the biggest test of a leader in facing crisis always happens on the inside of the leader. The result of the inside, that reality soon becomes manifest in a very public way. Who you are, what you're going through, and how you're processing internally is what it is that it eventually will come out in how you're leading people. A leader always feels the same emotions that everybody else feels. But leaders understand that they are responsible to not give in to their emotions, but to manage them. There are emotions, leader, that you must master. And there are emotions that you must uh, absolutely stir up that have to be stirred up and there are some that need to be put down some emotions you put them down some you stir them up I must master my anger but I must stir up my passion I must master my frustration and my fear but I must stir up peace and joy leader you must know your own emotional tendencies how to react how you react in life is something you need to understand when you're going into a crisis. Know yourself and how you respond to things. You must also know your emotional strengths. Learn from your tendencies and draw on your strengths. Always play to your emotional strengths when you're communicating to your people during a crisis. Don't allow your communication to come from a reactionary tendency that you have, but from a part of you that is a known strength. Go to that. If your attitude goes bad, then go to the Lord. Your attitude must be filtered through God's presence. We are desperate for leaders to manifest a strength that is filtered through their time alone with God. Every congregation, every ministry deserves to hear from a pastor, from a minister, from a leader who has filtered their emotions through God's presence. Your attitude is a big deal. Your people will take their cues from your attitude. One of the realities of attitude is this, that followers choose their attitudes, but leaders multiply theirs. The second thing I want to bring up to you out of this story is that during this time of crisis, you need to be reinforcing your spiritual disciplines. It says in verses 3 and 4 of this passage, Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Leaders, don't let any crisis situation define you. You define it. Don't let crisis take you to a place and define you of something that, 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 that's less than who you are. You bring definition to the situation. You bring definition to that crisis. You define the reality of the situation. You must take on what's happening in the natural, but move it to the supernatural as quickly as you can. Look at the supernatural words in this passage I just read to you. Inquire of the Lord. Fast. Seek help from the Lord. 
fantastic example of taking a natural set of circumstances and moving it quickly into a supernatural field of play. Crisis is always confusing. It's always upsetting. It's disorienting to people. It's disorienting to organizations. It's disorienting even to leaders. So don't forget that you need to drop back in a time of disorientation and confusion to what it is that you know, that you know, that you know. Whenever you're facing the unknown, you always drop back to what you're certain of. Wisdom is in part doing what you already know how to do. Waiting on the Lord is part, and it's just absolutely giving God a chance to speak while you're in the middle of a time when you're saying, I don't know, and you can feel those emotions starting to rage just a little bit more than normal. Waiting on the Lord is not passive. It's not inactive. It's a forward motion that always leads you toward solution. Pastor, if you handle the small things, the disciplines well, you're going to be able to handle the big things, the crisis, with more grace and more wisdom. Daily disciplines are the key to handling the unknown, the unforeseen crisis of tomorrow. Your response and ability to lead people through it is being determined today in how you handle the small things, the disciplines of your life. I'm going to stop here for today. I'm going to pick up this topic again next weekend with you. God bless you, my friend, as you lead yourself, as you lead your family, as you lead your ministry, and as you lead your community through these challenging times. May the peace of God that surpasses your understanding guard your heart and your mind. And may the wisdom of God adorn your decision-making. And may those who follow you find solace and rest in your example. God bless you.